Hello YouTube and today we're going to be having a look at printers in Minecraft and we are going to be building it and having a look how it works and hopefully programming a bit of machine code um, to make the printer work so we'll have a look at that if you haven't seen my little bit of programming video in Minecraft have a look at the I think it's called programming a computer redstone tutorial and that will show you how you can program things using machine code aka putting redstone torches whether it's on or off um, so no torch if it's off and a torch if it's on and this we can use this to print letters and numbers and things like that so let's have a look at that so let's get started so to begin with we, you want some of these items so we've got redstone dust redstone repeater a redstone torch a redstone comparator we have a piston and we have any block you want and this one I'm just using cyan so it stands out so to begin with we're just going to make the thing what prints and we can make multiple versions of these and hopefully maybe if this get, this video gets three likes I could do a 3D printer and that will work a slight bit differently. You can also make these with command blocks so you can use any blocks in the game but we're going to be doing it in vanilla Minecraft, not vanilla Minecraft, we're doing it in vanilla Minecraft, we'll be doing it in survival Minecraft so yeah I hope you enjoy. So we're going to begin by having this piston. What this piston does, every time it has a block there, we want it to push it. So we, ha we can do this in a lot of ways, I'm just basically just going to get some redstone dust around here, probably step it up by one, and hopefully this should work, and just stick a bug there, there you go, as you can see, it pushes it, so we want this to keep going, like that, so as you can see it'll push it, hopefully all the way up to 12 blocks where it'll stop, and that should be 12 blocks long, because pistons can only push up to 12 blocks. So for now, so we don't interfere with any of our other stuff, we're just going to get rid of this redstone torch. So we wanted to come along, let's say five, or yeah, well let's do five, so be a bit of like a letter size. So five blocks by five blocks, I guess will be a decent letter. So we can just make five pistons, one, two, three, four, five. We can leave it there. So what we've got here, it's going to come along to the end, and it's going to power these pistons and push it out that way. So we need to come up with a way of doing that. And I think I'm going to place a redstone torch down one and fill this in with a nice colour so it looks pretty. And then put a redstone torch in here. And then hopefully we can put one there. We can have this run. I'm actually just going to put blocks under this so it looks nice for when making it. So we can just put some nice blocks here, show you where the redstone is going. And then put redstone along here. And then across here, making sure you in the right areas and then put some repeat repeaters into these so it makes sure they powered sure they power even so if we put a block on top of here should see it pushes out so shall we try that now so one because we haven't got a redstone torch there that might not work one two three four five and then push it out hooray so we can have this again one two three four five hooray one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five and that should get our, us our letter so we've got that basically and i'm just gonna i'm gonna go through this and just surround it with a bunch of blocks so back in a minute so as you can see we have just put a few blocks around here i put obsidian here and it could probably do some obsidian over don't know why I'm, actually i'm gonna leave that there so we've got we've just put a bit of obsidian so the pistons can't move around and we've left a gap here that is for a reason. I'll show you that in a minute. The red indicates where it's actually getting printed from. The blue indicates the boundaries of where the printed stuff should go. And the light blue slash cyan is it? Yep, cyan is where the printed finished thing is. So we've got that there. And if we test, we go one. We're gonna spam the click. Um, oh, what's happened there? That isn't good. Oh, already fail. Oh, already failing. There we go. Nope, uh, no, misclicking. Uh, I do misclick a lot, so that is a thing. So we can place a piston here, and let's try it again. One, two, three, four, five. Yay! Uh, no, if I can count, five. Hooray! And why is it only activated the last one? This is turning out to be a real fail. There we go. That's a bit more like it. I think it has to have a delay, probably, in this, just to make sure it doesn't glitch out. So let's check that. So go yay one two three four five hooray right so enough of the hoorays now and as you can see it comes along here and gets pushed out and that's exactly what we wanted now we're not going to be using cyan to print because that that will require a lot of pistons to push it into place each time 
So we need to think of something that can move without being pushed around by pistons. One of those things is entities that are not affected by gravity. I mean, are affected by gravity, such as sand, red sand, and wherever gravel is. Where is gravel? I think I've retextured it. Yep, I've retextured it. Gravel. So we'll be get using these to print the stuff because they can fall down and are affected by gravity. So I can demonstrate this if you haven't seen already. I'm sure you probably have, but I'm going to just throw that sand on the. I mean, red redstone on the floor so it falls down so this is really useful this means that we don't have to push blocks around because it just naturally falls so that is really really useful so what we're going to be doing we're going to be building a bit a piston so it's going to push one now we need another one back again misclicking it's annoying so there we go so it's going to land here get pushed out one Get pushed out again and I've just done it one two forward sorry about this guys and I think that should be all right there so what we want to get powered first is this end block so as soon as it reaches there it gets powered so we're going to put that there actually we can just do a nice little bottom of this so like that so we want this to power straight away so we want it going in like that so we're going to put a redstone there so it has a straight line going straight into the piston this means as soon as the piston reaches it it's going to push out again that is exactly what we want so then we're going to put a block there and we are also going to put a piston on i think is is it two ticks i think this needs to be the other way around that needs to be on three three ticks and that needs to be on two possibly yay look at that yep that works that's pretty fast double piston extender and that means when a block is placed here Although I don't think I can, I might have to do a bud powered piston now. It's getting more complex. And we push it, it's going to get pushed out twice and then stay there. So that works pretty well. And now we can close up all this. So now we're going to need some sort of bud um, system to recognise when a block is placed here. And then gets pushed out one. So I think bud powers are made, bud powered things are made something along the lines of this. Yeah, and it's glitching. Why is it glitching? <laughs> that doesn't work in the slightest. Well done. Um, so I might replace that with an obsidian block so it doesn't break like it just did. Let's see if this is going to work at all. Of course. Oh, it did work. Whoa. Wow. Something actually worked while well, me. Oh, glitches. Great. As you can see, this is going fantastically well. Right, design two. This is another one of Mumbo Jumbo's. I don't know if he actually made it, but I saw it on the channel. So we can have a block there. We have a resin block there. And then we have a. How does it work? We're going to invert it so we've got a bit more space. We can have a block there. Not there. Misclicking again. We're then going to have a block there. And a block there. And a block where? There. And then a double block there. I think that needs to be one higher actually. You can see how well this is going. So then I think, well, what have we done here? <laughs> oh no. So what have we done? So this goes up two and then right, okay. So that needs to be like so. And then that goes over like one. And then we have a redstone thingy like that. And then we get rid of all this because it looks ugly. And we just link this round to this and hopefully get an output. So, that doesn't look too good, does it? <laughs> what has happened here? <laughs> so, finally got this finished and it is very complicated. As you can see, probably far bigger than it needs to be. But, it's this size and I'll probably compact it down later for the end of the video. But, as you can see... I've just accidentally activated it. But we've got the bud powered piston here. So as soon as there's a block update, it's going to detect it. And then hopefully push it out and re um, retract. So what's happening? We've got the bud powered piston here. What does the block detection? Like that. And then this comes over to a comparator um, pulse um, lengthener. I think that's the word for it. I'm not sure. But basically, what you have is a comparator. Not on subtract mode, if you can. Yep. So, like that. And you get a signal through. As you can see, and it lights up the comparators. Now, because these are two blocks apart, the comparator, comparator will um, have a bit of a delay between them. And they will slowly, slowly degrade the signal. So, as you can see, 
the signal is now off. And do that again. It takes, it takes a bit of time for the signal to turn off. So that's all we've made there. So this lengthens the signal. Then this gets a very quick pulse into the, well, it's actually quite long, it's six tick pulse into the pistons. And then the signal turns off because the block, the redstone can no longer pass through the block because the block is here and it's just trying to pass through air, what does not work. And then it goes into pistons and extends them. So we can watch that. See the piston move out of the way, it turns off. So we'll watch that again. And you can see, so that works pretty well, and that's what we want. So I'm then just now going to cover all this up, and we'll move on. So if we have a look now, it's been sort of covered up in a big box, and it is well oversized. Um, double piston extender, and it can be compacted a lot, and I might do that for the end of the video. The video. And obviously you can extend this a lot further out, well, to 12 blocks anyway, that's a piston push limit. So let's have a look at how it's going to work now. We've got, we drop a sand into here, and hopefully it gets pushed out, yep. And drop a red sand into here, we can just keep alternating this. So, as you can see, it's going to decide to work today, of course not. I think there's going to have to be a bit of a delay between these. There we go, for the, the uh, for the comparators to reset. There's certainly going to have to be delay, so as you can see, it's going to keep alternating. And it's just going to slowly get pushed out, which will just get this alternating pattern. It's going to reach the end. Now, if this gets pushed out again, it's going to push into this gap here. So we can do, dig down two blocks. And you just want something to collect the blocks, or you might just want to get rid of them. I just want to get rid of them because I know there's no tile drop, so we can just place a redstone like that. It's just going to get rid of the blocks. Then we can just cover all this over, like so. Not like that like so and it should just get pushed off and break the blocks so let's test that so we're going to go what combination are we on so it starts with sand there it goes once it's there we go. so you can see it's getting pushed along now and i've not let the signal degrade enough yeah you do have to wait for this to go down first so as you can see we place it it's going to take two seconds for this to Stop powering, there you go, and we can put the last one in. As you can see, hopefully, it should have been got rid of. So much time, we can make it a bit shorter. So, short hair, I meant shorter. <laughs> that sounded a bit weird. Um, so, like that. That might work a little better now. So, let's see how that works. Hooray, that, that worked a lot quicker. That went down a lot faster than how it did before. So I can just start covering all this up and I'll do this in a minute. So we've got no exposed redstone. That looks quite ugly. Except from the hole in the top where the sand or gravel is going to drop through. So we'll meet you back in a minute. Now that's been covered over with some blocks, we can have a look at the sand and gravel part. So you want, well, sand and sand part, red sand and sand. That's what we're going to be using today. So we can just place two blocks like that and build limit now. So that goes really, really high and we've got a big ton of sand and sand. So now this is the bit where it comes to the programming, the bit I enjoy the most. And I'm sorry if this video is getting a little lengthy. I'm trying to show you how to both build a printer and also program it. So I'm actually, I think I might cut this part way through and just do two parts of this. So we're going to just basically make the outputs for these. We're going to have output one and output two. This output's going to print sand and this output's going to print red sand. So I think we're going to leave it at that for this video before this gets a bit too lengthy. And so I'll we'll see I'll see you next time. I, ho I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you have enjoyed it. I think if this video reaches two likes, I will upload the next part of the video. And I hope you do enjoy this. I'm sorry I've not been uploading as much. I'm planning on doing about one or two episodes a week. And that is because otherwise I'm going to run out of programming stuff to do. Because there's so much you can do. It might get a bit repetitive otherwise. So one or two videos a week probably at the moment. And I hope you have enjoyed this. Do leave a like if you have enjoyed it. And if you really, really enjoyed it, please subscribe. So we'll see you for part two. Thank you from Crafting Redstone.